Welcome to the Mark Jackson Show, the night mode edition of the Mark Jackson Show. I'm Mark Jackson, your host is my co-host, the dynamic one, my guy Blue. Exciting brand of basketball tonight, Blue. Knicks and Pacers found a way to get it done. Tell me what you think. Yeah, man, that was a lot. That was a lot. It was some it was better than yesterday. I'm feeling I'm feeling good about tonight. I was I was <laughs> expecting huh? huh? Better than yesterday. <laughs> Anything is better than yesterday. Yeah, that's why I was excited tonight. I mean, I did ah uh, it was good tonight. I'm not gonna overhype tonight. The second game was great. The first game was cool. I'm still waiting to see that. I need the hype nights that we used to. This I need when the Black Eyed Peas was playing during the playoffs. I need some <laughs> like I'm not feel like it's feeling good, but it's not. I need it to go to the next level. Where's Ant Man at? It's time to see. It's time to see Ant Man and Joker go at it, man. I think it's going to go to I'm the gonna. next level as we move forward. It's going to be an exciting brand, competitive basketball. And uh, some of the ones that's been pretenders are going home and other teams are advancing. Why don't we pay some bills, though? You're right. That's what I was just about to ask, because I was going to see if we got enough budget to go check out the Knicks one one of these games and go fly out there. But we need to ask Underdog (laughs) Fantasy. So shout out to our sponsors, Underdog Fantasy. Go ahead and scan the QR code. Go to their site. And they are matching a deposit of up to $100 when you use the promo code MARK. That's M-A-R-K. Appreciate y'all, man. Now, anyways, back to what I was saying, man. Nah, I needed to go to another level. That was great from the New York Knicks. Your New York Knicks. I know you don't want to claim them. I saw some grit, determination, but you put some blood, sweat, and tears into that uniform. So, you know, you can't claim them tonight as they as they handle business. They did a great job. Made, made New Yorkers proud. They competed. They started off early. Gave back the lead. They could have folded the tent and looked forward to game seven, but instead they stopped the bleeding. And another huge performance by Jalen Brunson, the supporting cast. It was a big-time win, an absolute big-time win. Great to see, like I said, made New Yorkers proud. And once again, those fans showed up in Philadelphia. You heard those New York fans in that crowd. That's something they're going to have to work on moving forward because that's disappointing for one of the greatest sports towns in, 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 in this country it's disappointing to go out like that with the uh, with, with the visiting team making a lot of noise in your building. What's the what's the biggest thing that the Knicks did right tonight? They, to me, I thought before you you took away a little bit of Dante Divincenzo's confidence by not allowing him to close out ball games. You worked this t- this hard all season long. You play valuable minutes. You play crucial minutes. You win ball games for them. And and I don't care who you are. You get frustrated and lose some confidence. I thought Tibbs did a good job of letting him play big minutes, minimizing McBride's minute unless, unless he was called upon or needed upon, but allowed his guys that got it done to play and play extended minutes. I thought Dante DiVincenzo played great. I thought Josh Hart played great. I thought OG did a great job when it mattered most, attacking the paint, scoring. He's in a rhythm. You can tell he's getting more and more healthier as we, we advance further into the, to the playoffs. So, it was a stellar performance across the board, and I, I love the way they fought. And Jalen Brunson was Jalen Brunson. He continues to be special, taking all comers and handling his business on that offensive end. I got to say, man, <clears throat> we could sit here, we could say the Knicks, the Knicks were so good, the Knicks were so great, and yes, they were in their own right. But part of this win is fool's gold to me because a lot of this win goes to – the fact that the 76ers started this game out atrocious. If you start off a game and give up almost 50 points in the first quarter, I don't want to hear about the great job that the Knicks did before we address the disappointing job that the, that the 76ers did. I'm not letting them off the hook. Absolutely disappointing. You, you, you need, uh, in a must-win situation, a game six in your own building, you allow the Knicks, uh, a, for lack of a better term, a limited offensive team, with one home run hit in the middle of that lineup to, to win and start off the way that they started, impacting the game offensively, scoring in a variety of ways, playing lethargic. Think about it. The Knicks had 20 offensive rebounds in a game six on the road. An undersized basketball team at every position, basically, had 20 offensive rebounds. And you, you check the film if you want. It was energy and effort. They just pursued the basketball and outworked the Philadelphia 76ers. So no question about it. Absolutely disappointed. I'm embarrassed by it. This is a team that got rid of Doc Rivers because they, they didn't advance. Now we're going to make an excuse. They had no answer. Jalen Brunson became 
the seventh player in playoff history to score 40 points in three straight ball games. Jalen Brunson, as great as he is, you got to figure out how to make him uncomfortable. He was never uncomfortable when it mattered most. And that's, that's, that's on me as a team. That's on me as a coach. Yeah, no, he did what he wanted. He did what he wanted. A guy that I was disappointed in tonight also was, was Maxi. I don't know if, do you think that part of, part of it was they were just tired from this, this brutal series that it's been so far? I'm not making no excuses for that. They, 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 you, I never was tired in a playoff game at home with fighting for my playoff life. No fatigue. I'm playing against a dude that played 52 minutes the night before or 51 minutes or 53 or, or 48. Everybody's tired. The bottom line is you got to fight through it. And they refuse to fight through it. You point to Maxi. I, I, I say Maxi, but I also I'm not going to let Joel Embiid off the hook because he had great numbers. But I didn't like the way he finished the game. I thought he was a little soft, posting up, isolating, begging for fouls, not pursuing, attacking offensively. I thought he had some off the one, one five high screen and roll, throwbacks by Maxi. I thought he had some open threes that he turned down and tried to get it back to Maxi. I don't know whether it was, he wasn't feeling well or wasn't comfortable, didn't have a rhythm offensively. I was disappointed across the board for the Philadelphia 76ers. And then top, uh, Tobias Harris, zero points in a game six. Again, Losing his confidence, looking over at the coach, worried about whether he's going to play, whether he's going to be pulled out, what, what the situation is going to be. He underachieved, and so did the Sixers. Yeah, man. One dude I'm going to give a shout-out to from the Sixers is finally appearing to the party. Buddy Hill played well tonight and competed, hit big shots. I'm just – you can't tell me looking at these rosters that the Knicks are that much better than – the 76 is the two round, even if Embiid is not 100%. That effort was disgusting in the first quarter. To me, they're not better than the Philadelphia 76ers. They won the series, but they won it off grit, off the competitive spirit, off a of defensive discipline. They won it off the little things, the intangibles. Player for player, if I lined up the Philadelphia 76ers against the New York Knicks, I would prefer the talent overall of the Philadelphia 76ers. But I would prefer the, the fight, the competitive spirit, the discipline, the IQ, the never quit mentality. Give me that. And, and that's the thing that the analytics don't show. That's why you picked this Nick team to beat the Philadelphia 76ers. And that's exactly why they got the job done. We forget to talk about they doing this without Julius Randle. Is that, is that, how impressive is that to you? It's awfully impressive. This is, they're missing one of their two best players, an all-star a 25-point-per-game dude that can create problems that allows you to play small and ha have an have, uh, have, uh, uh, advantage at the power forward position, can initiate offense, can take the ball to Jalen Brunson's hands, not asking him to make every single play, every tr single trip down the floor. So they're certainly missing a big chunk of who they are, of their identity. You can't take that, you can't take that you know, and say it's a throwaway line. No, they're missing an all-star player. And that's even more reason why it's disappointing that the Philadelphia 76ers are now on vacation. Let me ask you, because I watched the game and I saw, I know Joel Embiid is hampered, but I watched a multitude of different coverages off the screens, but a lot of drop coverage, I guess, because Joel Embiid's knee was bothering him. What can you do as a coach <laughs> attempting to slow down Jalen Brunson when your big that's coming up with the screen is, is not 100%. One thing that I don't think enough teams do, and part of the reason is they're not smart enough, they don't work on it. Here's what makes Draymond Green an exceptional all-time great defender. He sniffs out the action. As soon as he sees they're going into a 1-5 pick and roll, if Draymond Green was in a Philadelphia 76ers jersey, he would have called Embiid to switch and take his man, he'd have ran up and personally got into the action, making life easier. Instead, Embiid stayed in the action, and they were able to expose him. Now, now the play where Josh Hart hits the, open, the, the three down the stretch of the ball game, which basically sealed the deal and won the game, I got no problem with that defense. They did a good job of getting the ball out of Brunson's hands. Kelly Oubre fired out of the trap, contested the shot late of Josh Hart, Josh Hart and he made the shot. That, that's when you say, good job. I'm, I'm willing to live with certain things. I'm not going to die with Jalen Brunson going one-on-one -on -one anymore. They forced him to get rid of the basketball, and Josh Hart made a huge three at the top of the key. You live with that, and you sent home. But overall, I thought the defense and, and the discipline 
of the Philadelphia 76ers was, was poor. No execution, no game plan strategy, and never, ever, ever made Jalen Brunson feel uncomfortable. All right, man, the 76ers season is done. But what is your plan of attack if you're a part of that 76ers organization moving forward? I believe I read where they have a, a, a max a contract where they can sign somebody. Um, if, it, if it's me, I think I would certainly go out and try to get a guy like a Paul George type, somebody like that, that fits, that can carry the offense at times, that gives us size at the 2-3 position, gives us versatility, that can initiate offense, take pressure off of Maxi and, 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 and Embiid. I think a, a guy like uh, Paul George, even a guy like Clay Thompson, Go get a, a, a legitimate two guard with some size, a wing player with some size that can defend and score and take pressure off of your home run hitter. I think it's and it's about improving the pieces around those guys, but uh, they, they they have to be better. It's a, I, I said it. You got rid of Doc Rivers for a reason. Now you can't. That's not just a throwaway line. You were disappointed in in him and and the job he did, and they are eliminated in, early in the playoffs. So it's 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 unfortunate, and you cannot. Be satisfied with it. It has to leave a, a bit of taste in your mouth the way that this season ended. Yeah, man, that was that was that was a lot. That was a lot tonight. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't appreciate you leave the whole. You play eighty two games, fans coming watching. It's, it's expectations, and I did not feel like they left it all on the line tonight. I, I don't know, man. Maybe that's just me. Maybe no, that's again, just me. The, the hardest working team one night. And again, it was it wasn't execution. It was that they they wanted it more. And when the back was against the wall, when the Sixers climbed back into the ball game, they responded. It was easy for them to tap think, out and look forward to Game Seven. They responded. I think I hear you talking about things that the 76ers could do, even as far as a max player. I think they need to. Yeah, max player of course helps with Paul George, Clay Thompson helps, but they need to get toughness around Joel and B. Get some other bigs. That can come in like I'm looking at the at the Timberwolves. You got a guy like Nas Reed coming off the bench. That helps. It helps to have somebody to take pressure off of Joel and B and to, and to bring some sort of toughness. Even PJ Tucker that they had, bring a dude like that in to change the identity from this soft. I, I don't know when the 76ers became this. I, I don't even. I don't know. Yeah, you can go find a PJ Tucker. It's tough to find a Nas Reed. That's the Sixth Man of the Year award winner. Guy that brings versatility, can play the four to five, can stretch to the three point line, can post up. Versatility can handle and make plays. So that's tough to find, but you can certainly find some grit and grind to fill out and complete your, your, the rest of your roster. All right, man. We're going to take a sneak peek into this next series coming up, the Knicks and the Pacers series. And I want to know what will be the keys for the Knicks moving forward in this series? To me, one of the keys is they're going to have to extend uh, their depth. They're going to have to play some guys off the bench because the Pacers play at a pace that's frenetic. They, 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 they push the basketball, force tempo, and, 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 and fatigue is going to be a factor. So you want to make sure that your guys are fresh and you're going to have to be able to trust uh, McBride. You're going to have to, to in, my, in my mind, you're going to have to trust Alec Burks. You're going to have to trust guys to give you quality minutes off that bench because the, 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 the Pacers play at a pace that is unbelievable. Off makes and misses, they push the basketball, force the issue with great tempo, and put constant pressure on you. So the Knicks are going to have to make sure that they're fresh, and when it matters most, that their key valuable players have something left in the tank. And the only way to do that is by extending the rotation, and getting some other guys involved. I see, I see the Knicks extend that, pay, extend that pace playing against... Uh the 76ers just now, do you think that they can match that pace of the Pacers and play with them in that style, or will they have to switch it up? I think they have to pick and choose. There's going to be times where they're going to push with pace, and then there's going to be times where they're going to control the tempo by running quality offense. You don't want to make it a health to scout the game. That's what the Pacers have done all season long, which made them an outstanding team and, and, and ha had an uh, excellent season because of the pace that they play with and the pressure they put on you. So you want to make sure that you pick and choose your spots when to be aggressive, when to play with pace, and then when to settle down and listen to some jazz music. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. So we got to talk about the other game tonight.
But hold on, can I say something? What's up? I got to I got to let this be known outside of basketball. Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney. If Ryan Garcia tested positive for illegal substance the day before the fight, if it is true, and that's what they are saying, then it's a crime that they allowed him to fight. And I was rooting for Ryan Garcia. I called that he would win the fight. But it's a crime that they allowed him to fight after testing positive. This is Boxing is a life or death situation. So it is, it is unprofessional for you to allow a guy that has an illegal substance in his body and tested positive to get in the ring and fight. So that's, that's my feelings on it. Uh, and I think, that to, to me, that's, that's, that has lawsuit written all over it. It's, 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 it's totally unprofessional and inexcusable. I mean, it's boxing, though. It's, it's, I don't think, and also, Ryan said that he didn't do it. Ryan said that he wasn't cheating. If I'm the experts, I don't care what Ryan said. This is what the data says. There's going to have to be an explanation, and a fight will not occur as long as he tests positive. I cannot put him in the ring with another fighter. I'm risking no, somebody's not, life in there. That's not real life, though. That's like if we got a we got a hundred million dollar fight, and I found out that night that Ryan Garcia popped, and I'm Haney's corner. I want this bread, and I really do believe that we can handle Ryan Garcia. So you pop. We still gonna fight. I'm sure they didn't. They knew he popped and they signed off on it. But my thing is, it's 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 getting a little sketchy. I need to know what he popped for, what the what the reasons behind it for, and, and then we could we could really judge. But I don't I don't know. It's a little. It's it's I don't know. Bo- well, you know, man, boxing is a shaky sport. It's it's some things going on behind the scenes that I don't think that we privy of. No, you're right. Maybe he maybe he, he is negative, but according to the data, he tested positive. So as a professional. I cannot allow the fight go on, no matter who says yes and no, because at the end of the day, that ain't going to hold up in front of a judge saying they wanted to fight. I got a responsibility to make sure these guys come out of this alive. Well, it does depend, though, because they they have to – they could decide whether they're going to avoid. He could have technically really popped, but if he goes, you I was taking such and such and such, I had no clue. They're not going to avoid the win for Ryan Garcia if it, was a, if it wasn't a – if he wasn't taking something that was crazy. Sanctioned body says no fight. End of story. I don't, I don't need no explanation. This is what when it says. When did they say that? That's the report that came out? No, he tested positive. That's the report. So and I, then they if fought. I'm, say it again? And then they fought. Yeah, it shouldn't have been a fight. On to the next thing. We, we'll deal with this another time. Let's talk playoff basketball. So let, last, last thing, though, real quick. If it's me and you, right? You, you training me. We, we about to go box. We got a, we got fifty million on the line. We find out the dude in the other locker room popped, but we thinking we could win. So you want to go ahead with the fight, or you want to just cancel it and tell everybody get their tickets back? Call Ticketmaster, cancel everything, shut it down. This is a great question because Bill Haney is Devin Haney's dad, and I'm your dad. We're not fighting, but guess what? It doesn't get to me. It gets to the sanctioning body, the people that are in charge. They are saying there's no fight. That's the responsibility of those folks. Don't bring it to me and give me an option. He tested positive. End of story. I'm All preaching right, now. No. <laughs> <laughs> you preaching to you preaching to Haney right now. Bill <laughs> Haney is watching like, yeah, Jack, yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Anyways, where was I? Okay. All right. Pacers and the Bucks sent them out of here. That's where we at. Sent them to kind of. You thought I was going to do the loud one, but it's a chill night. It's a chill night. They got them out of here, man. (laughs) What did you see from your former team tonight? I saw a team play to their strengths. I saw a team play the way they played during the regular season and made them a nightmare to defend. Led by Tyrese Halliburton, they played with pace. They forced the issue. They shared the basketball. 33 assists, getting everybody involved. And they, they defended at a high level, and they imposed their will once again on the Milwaukee Bucks to the point where they tapped out. Great job by Rick Carlisle. Great job by the Indiana Pacers responding to the loss coming back from Milwaukee. They responded and responded emphatically. Yeah, man. That's uh, Yeah, what I saw tonight, the biggest thing that stood out to me was the coaching adjustment from Rick Carlisle. Holding it in your back pocket to start picking up full court the whole game, 
with the C's on the line, I like that. I was feeling that. And the team matched that energy, and they came out ready, man. They came no, out it, ready. It was great. They extended the defense, and you, you have a hobbled, not 100% Dame Lillard, and you put pressure on him. And Pat Beverly is a great competitor, great energy, outstanding defender, but he's not a true point guard as far as initiating your offense. So they extended the defense on him also, made the Bucks a little uncomfortable, took him out of rhythm, and forced the issue. And they didn't just do it in spurts. They did it all night long. It's a big-time effort game for the Indiana Pacers and great adjustment. And I thought they got great energy and effort off the bench also. Uh, Toppin, McCollum, they just did a great job of scoring and, and, and playing with the same type of pace. They didn't slow it down when they, went, when they went to their bench. They continued to keep their foot on the gas pedal, and it wore out the Milwaukee Bucks. Yeah. Now, I'm not sure if this – same exact game plan works again because I felt like it caught the Bucks off guard. But how do you, as a as an NBA coach, keep your team prepared when teams are just throwing different things and schemes at you? There's so many things to keep up with. This is not a secret. Nobody's doing anything that's earth-shattering. Nobody's breaking any new invention. We understand it. And the proper adjustments need to be made, and we need to react quickly and enforce, you know, what we instill as far as the adjustments are concerned. I expect to see the Indiana Pacers pick up Jalen Brunson full court and try to harass him. What you want to make sure you do is, if you're going to do it, don't pick up no ticky-tack fouls because he's so crafty and uh, lull you to sleep, then put you in bad situations, then all of a sudden you're in the bonus and they're shooting free throws. But I certainly expect them to push with pace and then to extend their defense, putting pressure on the Knicks. Yeah. I guess for I guess for me what I'm saying is cuz I know it's nothing new under the sun as far as basketball. But that being said, there's been times where we may not be as on point with our uh press offense because we haven't played against press in a few weeks or we might may not may not be on point so we get caught off guard. It's supposed to be a guy flashes in the middle of the time and is off, whatever the case may be. But that's what I felt I, like I saw tonight from the Bucks. Yeah, but it wasn't tricky defense. It was picking up full court. So with a he healthy Dame Lillard, I don't need a big man flash to the paint. No, everybody get out the way. I'm bringing the ball up the floor, and I'm initiating offense. They wasn't able to do that. They got the ball out of his hands because he wasn't 100%. Patrick Beverly's not as comfortable with the pressure. Chris Middleton, that's not what you ask him to do on a nightly basis. And you looked up and down that roster. They didn't have another guy to initiate the offense and relieve some of that pressure. Great, great uh, game plan. By the, by, the, by the paces, and, and they fulfilled it because it puts a toll on your body. Everybody had the, the request. Everybody knew the game plan, and they picked up full court. No matter who brought it up the floor, they turned them and, and made them get into their offense late, and that puts you in a better position to, have, to, to, to be able to stop them defensively because now they're fighting against the, the shot clock. It's two people. It's two people I got a shout out from that game tonight, man. One former New York Knicks. Obi Toppin put in work off the bench. And another one, not a, new, not a former New York Knicks, but somebody else put in work, and that's T.J. McConnell. What did you see from this team as far as their depth is concerned, and how is their bench putting up this type of numbers? That's 40 points off the bench just from two players. Yeah, I see T.J. McCollum as a future – McCollum, I see him as a future coach. High IQ, knows how to play, comes in, can play the point and play alongside of Halliburton uh, – pushes with pace, gets guys involved, and then what he doesn't do is shoot the three. Last night, he was knocking down the three ball. So he's a, he's a guy that I can see him playing for years to come, and so many teams need a guy like him coming off that bench that can start when called upon and then coming off the bench can initiate offense and orchestrate your second unit. And as far as Toppin is concerned, how about the opportunity he gets? I've been there before. Traded from New York. You get to Indiana, and now you play for Indiana going back to New York to play against the team that traded you uh, in the playoffs. It's an unbelievable feeling, and I'm sure he's excited about it. And as a young player, the only advice is settle down. It's not you against the Knicks. It's the Pacers against the Knicks. It's going to be a wonderful series. All right, all right, all right. Don't get, don't, don't get too ahead of us talking about the Knicks. There's still some things we got to talk about from this game tonight, man. So the Pacers took care of business. Game is winded down. 
It's over. Bucks looking like they're going, going to Cancun. And for some reason, Pat Bev decides to pat Mahomes the ball into the stand and hits a woman in the head. Did you see that? And what is going on? Is Pat Bev suspended, man? What is, I don't even know. He not we're not gonna see him until next year, but what is going on, man? No, I, I'm not here pulling for anybody to lose money, but he, he's gonna get suspended. Because he didn't just do it once. They threw the ball back to him and he fired it again to, to, to back to the man. He's gonna get suspended and it's gonna be a su- substantial one. Uh, you can't do that. You cannot do that. That's inexcusable. The commission is well aware of that. We have rules and regulations that we don't do that engage with the fans, disappointed in Pat Beverly. He certainly knows better. All he can do is own it, apologize, own it, and move forward. But he is getting suspended. Write that down with a Sharpie. No, <laughs> no, no pencil eraser. He's getting suspended. And I'm not pulling for it. I'm not here. I'm, I'm not calling the league office and asking for it. It just is what it is. You like how I did that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Look. I'm pulling for it, man. Don't no. He needs to. That I'm pulling for. I'm sorry. The dude. I'm pulling just, for him, but pulling for him for what? The dude needs to be suspended. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, we got. You said like, you were pulling for him. No, roof of Pat Bev, good, but but we got to hold him accountable for that. Because I no think question. the first time, I think both times he was aiming for the dude that he hit the second time. It's just he was. That's that's that was a microcosm of the Bucks night. That dude couldn't even throw an assist to the dude's <laughs> dude missed the assist to the dude's head. Hit the lady. No, nah, you can't hit my aunt in the crowd. She's just going home like I don't know. Pat Bev just hit me in the head. Nah, man, suspend him. He got to be brought into the office. Let's talk to him. I agree with you. We can't be calling up the office, but you know, let Adam Silver handle it, and, and we'll get to the bottom of it. Yeah, think about it. If, imagine if that that woman's husband was sitting next to her. I don't know if he was or wasn't, but imagine if he wanted to be like, well, can you hit my wife? That's unacceptable and start charging towards the man. It gets ugly. So it could have gotten ugly no matter who you want to say would have won or it, that doesn't matter. What you don't want is that type of scene at an NBA basketball game. So a message will be sent and it'll be loud and clear. Yeah, man. All right. Anything you want to, anything else you want to add from that game that you saw that we, we left out? No, it's just great win by the Pacers. And excited about what, what lies ahead. But if you're the Bucks, you, you got to be disappointed. And you got to, you know, heal up, make the proper adjustments as far as Ross is concerned, and look forward to next year. What adjustments What adjustments can they make, man? They, they, what? Everybody, everybody has to make adjustments moving forward. Improving the <laughs> roster, improving the depth. All those things c- come into play, especially when you wind up losing. Only team that may not think about them making an adjustment is the last one standing may say we're going to come back the same way we left. Let me ask you, if this Bucks team is healthy, does this series end a different way or do the Pacers still come out on top? I picked the Indiana Pacers, and I picked them knowing that Giannis and Dane was going to play. So, so I didn't pick them once they went down. I picked the Pacers to win the series because I didn't like the habits, the competitive spirit – the defensive intensity, lack of defensive intensity that the, the Bucks had on full display throughout the whole season. They've been inconsistent. So I believe that they'll mess around and allow the Pacers to play with rhythm, play with pace, they offer no resistance, and then have their hands full. And that's exactly what took place. Yeah, man, it's going to be interesting. All right, what will be the main keys in the next round for the Pacers going up against the New York Knicks? You got to be able to defend Jalen Brunson and make him uncomfortable. You got to trap him at times. You got to extend the defense. You got to be true to your identity. Some coaches say we can't run one. No, you've been running all year long. Don't 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 change it now. So they want to continue to play with pace, continue to force the issue. But when they got into trouble during the regular season, they didn't take pride on the defensive end. You have to take pride defensively and try to disrupt some of the things that the New York Knicks are doing. And, and take away some of the things they do well, especially Jalen Brunson. The problem with the Pacers were they, they didn't defend all season. It was inconsistent up and down. But when they do, they are a nightmare to have to compete against because then, then they're clicking on all cylinders. And I think that the, the thing they want to do is find a way to get Pascal Siakam going. When they are at their best, it's not just Halliburton. It's Siakam initiating offense, playing off the post, taking advantage of his size, his strength, 
playing in isolations, playing in transition. They got to find a way to get him going and keep him going. But I think it's going to be a, it's going to be a tremendous series. Yeah, I know. I always hear you say that that teams fall back to their habits, or, or you are what you are basically during the season. And seeing the Pacers play defense at that level tonight, I wish that they could play like that every night. I know it's not sustainable, but I wish that they could play at that level every night defensively because we'd be seeing a, a, a team that, that would be a team to watch out for. But, but I would argue with you and say, why is it not sustainable? You got Nemhart, you got Naismith, you got Miles Turner, you, you got Pascal Siakam, you got Halliburton with that side. You can defend that way. You got guys coming off the bench and Toppin and McCall. You, you can, we can defend that way. It's a cop out to say we can't. I'd put the tape on, show them it, and say, so it's doable. So you can be disruptive the entire length of the floor. So you can help and recover. So you can help the helper. So you can protect the rim. All of those things that was on full display when it mattered most against the Bucks, we can duplicate it against this Nick team. That's the mentality, and that's the approach. I'm saying that your habits catch up to you at some point. So throughout the season, they haven't stepped up in that way. They finally did, but at some point they're gonna gonna regress back to the mean, and that's that's my only that's what I'm saying. No question, no yeah. question. I, I got no no debate as far as that's concerned. You are correct. Okay, so I got to ask you, who's the winner of this series, and in how many games? I don't know how many games. I never was into how many games. And I don't care who wins any series. But if I had to pick the winner between the Knicks and the Pacers, I'm going to pick the Indiana Pacers to win. Just because mm. I think they're clicking, they're playing well, so are the Knicks. But I think, I think they have the advantage in this series. And it'll be, it's going to be a great series. And again, I don't care. Don't at me, New Yorkers. I don't care who wins and who loses. My job is to pick who I think is going to win the series, and I believe that the Indiana Pacers will. All right. I'm going to say <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you, man. You were supposed to go you. the other way, man. I know, but I, I'm thinking about it. I don't want to – I'm thinking about it. I know you're going to bring it back up if the Knicks lose and be like, I'll pick the Pacers, you pick the Knicks. You were supposed to win. You were supposed to pick the Knicks so they don't say the Jacksons hate the Knicks. I don't care. Hold on, let me think. Let me think. <clears throat> That's tough, man. Knicks. I'm going with the Knicks. All right. Okay. All right. I'll go with the Knicks, man. I'm going <laughs> there with you the go. Knicks. All right. There man. you go. Yo, yo, New York, New York fans, don't call me a bandwagon. When we win it all, no, I held it down for you. This is the moment. I'm with New York basketball. Here we go, man. Here we go. It's going to be, it's, it is going to be a great series, though. I will say that. Yeah, yeah. It is going to be interesting. All right, man. Two games, six is Friday night. Let's start with the Clippers, who have to win against the Mavs to keep it going. What do you expect from this game? I expect the Dallas Mavericks to finish them off. Back home, I expect them to play with a sense of urgency. I expect to see them learn from the last time they was in Dallas when they allowed the, 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 uh, the Clippers to establish a rhythm early, allowed Harden and Paul George to get it going, and then was a handful. I expect to see the Dallas Mavericks make the proper adjustments and don't play around and finish off the Clippers. Now, that's mm -hmm. not going to be an easy task because the Clippers are more than, more than capable of coming with the right mindset and pushing this series to a game seven. But I fully expect to see the Mavs and that supporting cast continue to play good, solid basketball, especially because they're at home. Yeah, I'm with you. I think the Mavericks finish it out. If it's one team that I would hate to have to bet my life on, it's the Clippers, man. They Jekyll and Hyde. One game, they could be the best team, look like the best team in the NBA. The next game, they could look pedestrian. So who knows? It's really a, a, a coin toss, what we, see t what we see tomorrow. So I agree. <laughs> All right, Cavs and the Magic got a game six of their own, and the game is in Orlando. Let me know what you expect and who's going to win this game, Pops. I think, the, I think the Orlando Magic will come out with energy. They will get their role players and guys involved offensively. They will play and extend the defensive intensity the way we saw them in the last game in Orlando. I expect to see the Cavs close out the series. 
but I expect to see a much more lively, energetic Orlando Magic team that pushes this basketball game to down the stretch where whoever executes the finest will win. So I, I'm going to say the Cavs, but I will not be surprised if Orlando pulls this game off. Can I get a pick? I did. So who, you said, okay, so you said the Cavs? Oh, you but heard then you me. said I would not be surprised if Orlando. Okay, all right, all right, all right. All right, man, so, all right, all right. So Orlando out of here. Orlando go. I can't say it for everybody. Orlando going to Disney. Well, Disney. They're going to Disney World. <laughs> Hold on, time out. What accent was that? What was that? It was tough. That's a new word. I never say Disney in that accent, so it's tough. It's tough. I, you want to try it back. again? I'm, no, no, no. You, that's good. <laughs> they can replay it. Replay value. Okay. <laughs> okay, I got you. All right, so I need to know, last thing, Puff, who is the winner of the mama? There goes that man award. <laughs> so that's, that's a joke. That got to be a joke. Huh? Everybody say it all together. No surprises. I don't even need an envelope. Don't even need an envelope. The winner is Jalen Brunson. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Went on the road and painted the Philadelphia skies again, orange and blue. Put on an absolute clinic. Made every play, knocked down free throws, knocked down threes, knocked down runners in the, in, in, in the paint area, put his team on his back, and another 40-piece delivered by Rick's son, Jalen. Jalen Brunson tonight's mama. There goes that man award. Yeah, put that work in, Jalen. He cooking, man. He cooking, And he's man. doing it he, chilling. He's chilling. Like, that's he, what he, I'm saying. He doesn't get rattled. He's cool, calm, and collective. I don't know what this is, but I'm going to start doing it. I mean, he is, <laughs> he is, it is a thing of beauty, the way he's playing. No, that little – I've never seen a guard his size. That little reverse pivot spin back to the jump shot, it's ridiculous, a dude his size – getting that separation like he's he's shooting like he's 6'8". The footwork is impeccable, man. And there's it's no crazy. way in the world, if I'm coaching against him, in a playoff situation, I'm playing him one-on-one. -on -one. He is going to get doubled off pick and roll. I'm going to hit him at times, sending a, another guy towards him. I'm not going to overreact, but I'm going to give him the respect that he deserves. He's one of seven dudes to score 40-plus points in three straight playoff games. And I believe Michael Jordan did it three times. So, so He's in rare air, no pun intended. Give him yeah. the respect that he deserves, and he has he has absolutely been spectacular. Yeah, man, that dude is amazing. All right, man. Thank you to our sponsors, Underdog Fantasy, for keeping the lights on. Go ahead and scan that QR code in the corner and go to the site, play the pick'em game. That's our favorite. That's a wrap for this episode of the Mark Jackson Show, the Night Mode Edition. I'm Mark Jackson. This is my guy Blue. Thank you for your love and support. Remember. I was driving today. I got stuck in traffic, 10 cars deep. I tried to figure out why, just at a standstill. People blowing their horn, people yelling and screaming outside their window. It wasn't until I got to the front that I realized there was a dude in the middle of the road riding a bicycle in the car lane. That's crazy. How selfish can you be? I'm talking about that guy, but now I'm talking about you. You depressed, discouraged, and defeated. This just in, you're in the wrong lane. Do me a favor. If that's what you want, I'm cool with it. Do you. But the bottom line is, you are delaying others from getting to their destination. Remember that. Blessings. <laughs>